Canto Two of the Story of Rimini. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of Rimini by Lee Hunt. Canto Two: The Bride's Journey to Rimini. We'll pass the followers and their closing state. The court was entered by a hinder gate. The duke and princess had retired before, joined by the knights and ladies at the door. But something seemed amiss, and there ensued deep talk among the spreading multitude, who got in clumps, or paced the measured street, filling with earnest hum the noontide heat. Nor ceased the wonder as the day increased, and brought no symptoms of a bridal feast. No mass, no tilt, no largesse for the crowd, nothing to answer that procession proud, but a blank look, as if no court had been silence without and secrecy within and nothing heard by listening at the walls but now and then a bustling through the halls or the dim organ roused at gathering intervals the truth was this the bridegroom had not come but sent his brother proxy in his room a lofty spirit the former was and proud little gallant and had a sort of cloud hanging for ever on his cold address which he mistook for proper manliness but more of this hereafter guido knew the prince's character and he knew too that sweet as was his daughter and prepared to do her duty where appeal was barred she had stout notions on the marrying score and where the match unequal prospect bore might pause with firmness and refuse to strike a chord her own sweet music so unlike the old man therefore kind enough at heart yet fond from habit of intrigue and art and little formed for sentiments like these which seemed to him mere maiden niceties had thought at once to gratify the pride of his stern neighbour and secure the bride by telling him that if as he had heard busy he was just then twas but a word and he might send and wed her by another of course no less a person than his brother the bride meantime was told and not unmoved to look for one no sooner seen than loved and when giovanni struck with what he thought mere proof how his triumphant hand was sought dispatched the wished-for prince who was a creature formed in the very poetry of nature the effect was perfect and the future wife caught in the elaborate snare perhaps for life one shock there was however to sustain which nigh restored her to herself again she saw when all were housed in guido's face a look of leisurely surprise take place a little whispering followed for a while and then twas told her with an easy smile that prince giovanni to his great chagrin had been delayed by something unforeseen but rather than defer his day of bliss if his fair ruler took it not amiss had sent his brother paolo in his stead who said old guido with a nodding head may well be said to represent his brother for when you see the one you know the other by this time paolo joined them where they stood and seeing her in some uneasy mood changed the mere cold respects his brother sent to such a strain of cordial compliment and paid them with an air so frank and bright as to a friend appreciated at sight that air in short which sets you at your ease without implying your perplexities that what with the surprise in every way the hurry of the time the appointed day the very shame which now appeared increased of begging leave to have her hand released and above all those tones and smiles and looks which seemed to realize the dreams of books and helped her genial fancy to conclude that fruit of such a stock must all be good she knew not how to object in her confusion quick were the marriage rites and in conclusion the proxy turning midst the general hush kissed her meek lips betwixt a rosy blush at last about the vesper hour a score of trumpets issued from the palace door the banners of their brass with favours tied and with a blast proclaimed the wedded bride but not a word the sullen silence broke till something of a gift the herald spoke and with a bag of money issuing out scattered the ready harvest round about then burst the mob into a jovial cry and largess largess claps against the sky and bold giovanni's name the lord of rimini the rest however still were looking on careless and mute and scarce the noise was gone when riding from the gate with banners reared again the morning visitors appeared 
the prince was in his place and in a car before him glistening like a farewell star sat the dear lady with her brimming eyes and off they set through doubtful looks and cries for some too shrewdly guessed and some were vexed at the dull day and some the whole perplexed and all great pity thought it to divide two that seemed made for bridegroom and for bride even she whose heart this strange abrupt event had seared as twere with burning wonderment could scarce at times a passionate cry forbear at leaving her own home and native air till passing now the limits of the town and on the last few gazers looking down she saw by the roadside an aged throng who wanting power to bustle with the strong had learnt their gracious mistress was to go and gathered there an unconcerted show bending they stood with their old foreheads bare and the winds fingered with their reverend hair farewell farewell my friends she would have cried but in her throat the leaping accents died and waving with her hand a vain adieu she dropped her veil and backwarder withdrew and let the kindly tears their own good course pursue it was a lovely evening fit to close a lovely day and brilliant in repose warm but not dim a glow was in the air the softened breeze came smoothing here and there and every tree in passing one by one gleamed out with twinkles of the golden sun for leafy was the road with tall array on either side of mulberry and bay and distant snatches of blue hills between and there the alder was with its bright green and the broad chestnut and the poplar's shoot that like a feather waves from head to foot with ever and anon majestic pines and still from tree to tree the early vines hung garlanding the way in amber lines nor long the princess kept her from the view of that dear scenery with its parting hue for sitting now calm from the gush of tears with dreaming eye fixed down and half shut ears hearing yet hearing not the fervent sound of hoofs thick reckoning and the wheels moist round a call of slower from the farther part of the checked riders woke her with a start and looking up again half sigh half stare she lifts her veil and feels the freshening air tis down a hill they go gentle indeed and such as with a bold and pranksome speed another time they would have scorned to measure but now they take with them a lovely treasure and feel they should consult her gentle pleasure and now with thicker shades the pines appear the noise of hoofs grows duller to her ear and quitting suddenly their gravelly toil the wheels go spinning o'er a sandy soil here first the silence of the country seems to come about her with its listening dreams and full of anxious thoughts half freed from pain in downward musing she relapsed again leaving the others who had passed that way in careless spirits of the early day to look about and mark the reverend scene for awful tales renowned and everlasting green a heavy spot the forest looks at first to one grim shade condemned and sandy thirst or only chequered here and there with bushes dusty and sharp or plashy pools with rushes about whose sides the swarming insects fry opening with noisome din as they go by but entering more and more they quit the sand at once and strike upon a grassy land from which the trees as from a carpet rise in knolls and clumps with rich varieties a moment's trouble find the knights to rein their horses in which feeling turf again thrill and covet and long to be at large to scour the space and give the winds a charge or pulling tight the bridles as they pass dip their warm mouths into the freshening grass but soon in easy rank from glade to glade proceed they coasting underneath the shade some bearing to the cool their placid brows some looking upward through the glimmering boughs or peering grave through inward opening places and half prepared for glimpse of shadowy faces various the trees and passing foliage here wild pear and oak and dusky juniper with briony between in trails of white and ivy and the suckle's streaky light and moss warm gleaming with a sudden mark like flings of sunshine left upon the bark and still the pine long-haired and dark and tall in lordly right predominant o'er all much they admire that old religious tree with shaft above the rest up shooting free and shaking when its dark locks feel the wind its wealthy fruit with rough mosaic rind 
at noisy intervals the living cloud of cawing rooks breaks o'er them gathering loud like a wild people at a stranger's coming then hushing paths succeed with insects humming or ring dove that repeats his pensive plea or startled gull up screaming towards the sea but scarce their eyes encounter living thing save now and then a goat loose wandering or a few cattle looking up aslant with sleepy eyes and meek mouths ruminant or once a plodding woodman old and bent passing with half indifferent wonderment yet turning at the last to look once more then feels his trembling staff and onward as before so ride they pleased till now the couching sun levels his final look through shadows dun and the clear moon with meek awe lifted face seems come to look into the silvering place then first the bride waked up for then was heard soul voice the poets and the lovers bird preluding first as if the sounds were cast for the dear leaves about her till at last with shot out raptures in a perfect shower she vents her heart on the delicious hour lightly the horsemen go as if they'd ride a velvet path and hear no voice beside a placid hope assures the breath suspended bride so ride they in delight through beam and shade till many a rill now passed and many a glade they quit the piney labyrinths and soon emerge into the full and sheeted moon chilling it seems and pushing steed on steed they start them freshly with a homeward speed then well-known fields they pass and straggling cots boy-storied trees and passion-plighted spots and turning last a sudden corner see the square-lit towers of slumbering rimini the marble bridge comes heaving forth below with a long gleam and nearer as they go they see the still marecchia cold and bright sleeping along with face against the light a hollow trample now a fall of chains the bride has entered not a voice remains night and a maiden silence wrap the plains End of Canto 2